from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Brought to you by Acronis. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here with theCUBE coverage for two days. We're wrapping up, getting down to day one in the books for the Cronus Global Cyber Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here in Miami Beach, the Fontainebleau Hotel. I'm personally excited for this next guest because I'm a huge Red Sox fan, even though I got moved out to California. Giants is in different, different uh, Area. So National League's different than American League. Still in my heart and my, with the Red Sox. And we're here with an industry veteran, uh, seasoned professional in IT and data, uh, Brian Shield, Red Sox, Boston Red Sox Vice President of Technology in IT. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for Thank joining you. us. It's great to be here. So congratulations on the rings. Since I moved out of town, Red Sox win their World Series, break the curse of the Bambino. Hey, we appreciate that. Thank hey, you. My family you know, doesn't want me back. So I'll, you got to show, I'll, yeah, so for, uh, maybe I'll put this one out for the, uh, there's only can zoom in on this. I don't know which camera is a good one. This one here. So there you go. So World Series champs are at least for another week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bummer about this year. Pitching just couldn't get it done, but that's you know good team at the top. You know, again things move on. You know, new regime, new GM going to come on board. Yep. Um, so, but in general, Red Sox, you know, storied franchise, love it there. Fenway Park, the cathedral of baseball parks. Definitely. And you're seeing that that just play out now, standard. So, just a great place to go. We have tickets there. Um, so, I got to ask you, technology, sports, really is modernized faster than I think any category. I mean, certainly, cybersecurity forced to modernize because. Of the threats, but sports, you got a business to run, not just IT and making the planes yep. run on time, scouts, money, whatever. You got fan Fans, experience, yep. stadiums, you know, opportunities, club you know. management, yep. scouts are out there, so you got business, team, fans. And data is a big part of it. That's part of your career. Yep. Tell us about what's you know, what the cutting edge innovation is at the Red Sox these days. Well, so I think um, you know baseball in general is, as you indicated, it's a very evolving kind of environment. I mean, historically, I think people really sort of relish the nostalgia of sports, and Fenway Park being sort of as historic as it is was probably the uh, the pinnacle of that in some respects. But you know, Red Sox have always been leaders in baseball analytics. You know, and everyone's pretty familiar with Moneyball and. You know, uh, Brad Pitt and, and um, is that whatnot. a true story? He turned down the GM job. I, I'm told it is. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if I fully, you know, vetted that question. But the, um, but you know, so so you know, over the last you know six seven years, you know, we've really turned our attention to sort of leveraging sort of technology across the business, right? So not just baseball analytics and how we do scouting, which continues to evolve at a very rapid pace, but also, as you pointed out, running a better business, you know, understanding our fans, understanding fan behavior, you know, understanding the stadium. Stadium, there's a lot of challenges around running an effective stadium, and, uh, and first and foremost, all of us is, is really ensuring it's a great fan experience. And so, um, you know, whether it's artificial intelligence or IoT technologies or, you know, um, you know, 5G or the latest Wi-Fi, all those things are coming up at Fenway Park. You know, we, you and I talked earlier about, we're about to break ground for a new theater. So uh, a live theater on the outside of beyond, beyond the bleachers type of thing. So that'll be, you know, 5,400 seat arena, um, 200 live performances a year with eSports, you know, complementing it. And um, so it's, it just gives you an example of just how fast baseball is sort of transitioning. And the theater, is that going to be blown out from where that parking garage is, structure, and going towards? Yeah, right, so, so the corner of Lansdowne and Ipswich, if yep. you think of that sort of corner back there, for those that are familiar with Fenway area type yep. of thing. So it's going to be a very big big change, and you'll see the difference too from you know within the ballpark. So you'll now, I think we'll lose a couple rows of the bleachers, and that'll be replaced with sort of another gathering area for fans and things like that on the back end of that theater. So uh, it'll be a great experience, and I think I think it really speaks to sort of our ability to sort of, you know, to think of Fenway more as a destination, as a venue, oh, as, yeah. as a complimentary experience. Uh, we want people to come to the area to enjoy sports and to enjoy entertainment. And you know, Brian, so. the consumerization of IT has been kicked around last decade. That was a big buzzword. Now the blending of a physical event and digital has certainly consumed the world. And Absolutely. as you're starting to see that dynamic, you speak to a theater, that's a physical space. But digital is also a big part of kind of that complementary, it's not mutually exclusive for each other. They're integrated business models. 100%. So therefore, the technology has to be seamless. The data has to be available. 
Yep, and it's got to be secure. Well, the data's got to be ubiquitous, right? I mean, you don't want to, I mean, if we're going to have fans attending theater and then you're going to go to Fenway Park or they leave a game and they go to some other event or they attend a tour of Fenway Park and, and beyond sort of the, maybe the traditional what people might think about is sort of when they think about baseball in Fenway Park, you know, we have 10 to 12 concerts a year. You know, we'll host Spartan games, you know. This Christmas, this, I'm sorry, Christmas 2020, we now have sort of the Fenway Bowl. So we'll be hosting sort of the a, you know, AAC, ACC, yeah. you know, championship games there with ESPN. And so, you know, there hockey are Hockey games? Hockey games, you know. Yeah. Well, obviously we have Liverpool, you know, soccer being held there and things. So it's it's much more of a uh, of a destination, a venue for us and how we leverage all the wonderful things about Fenway Park and, and how we modernize, how we get basically the best of what makes Fenway Park as great as it is, yeah. yet as modern as we can make it where appropriate to sort of create a great fan experience. It's a tough balance between um, balancing the brand and having things on brand as well. Sure. Does that come into your job a lot around IT, saying being on brand, not kind of yeah, tearing absolutely. down the I mean, old? I, I mean, I think you know, our CEOs are in, in leadership team. I mean, it's it's not success for us if, if you if you pan to the audience and everyone's looking at their phone, right? You know, that's not what we aspire to. Or we aspire to, you know, leverage technology to sort of simplify people's experience of how do you get to the ballpark? You know, how do I park? How do I get? You know, if I want to buy, you know, concession or merchandise, how do yeah. I do it easily and simply? How do we supplement that experience with maybe additional data that you might not have had before, you know, and things like that. So we're doing a lot of different testing right now with whether it's like 4D technologies and or, you know, how we can understand sort of watch, watch a play from different dimensions or, you know, AI and be able to perhaps see sort of the skyline of Boston since 1912 when Fenway Park launched, you know, on first when it became effective and things. And so, you know, we sort of see all these technologies as, as supplemental materials of really kind of making it sort of a holistic yeah. experience for a fan. You know, in Las Vegas, they have a section of Las Vegas where they have all their test beds, 5G, they call it 5G. Yep. It's really, you know, <laughs> evolution, E, <laughs> big 5G, but it's a sandbox. One of the challenges that you guys have in Boston, I know from a constraint standpoint, physically, is you don't have a lot of space. How do you sandbox new technologies and what are some of the things that are cool that people might not know about that are being sandboxed. So one, how do you do it yeah. effectively? And then what are some of the cool things that you guys are looking at or things they might not know about that would be sure. interesting? So, yeah, so Finley Park, you know, I mean, we struggle, as you know, with a little bit with our footprint. You know, I mean, honestly, I, I walk into some of these large stadiums and I get uh, instant jealousy relative to just, you know, the mm -hmm. amount of space that people have to work with and things, you know. But we have a great relationship with our partners. So we really, you know, partner, I think, particularly well with key partners like Verizon and others. You know, so like, so we now have 5G partially implemented Fenway Park. You know, we expect to have it sort of fully live come opening day next year. So we're really excited about that. Um, we hope to have a new version of uh, Wi-Fi, the latest version of Wi-Fi available for the second half of the year yeah. um, after all separate, probably after the season's over, but before our bowl game, hopefully. So, um, and, and so we're looking at some really interesting ways that we can tease it out. That bowl game, we're really trying to really kind of use it as an opportunity, the Finley Bowl, to, as an opportunity to really make it a kind of a high-tech bowl. So we're looking at ways of maybe doing everything from hackathons to kind of a, a pre-e-gaming sort of event to some interesting sort of fan experiential opportunities and things like that. Got a lot of nerds at MIT, Northeastern, BU, Bentley, Babson, yep. Yep. all the schools in the area. Yeah, and so we're reaching, we'll be reaching out to colleges <laughs> and we'll be reaching out to our the ACC and AACs as well and see what we can do to kind of create sort of a really fun experience and, and capitalize on sort of the evolving role of esports and, and sort of the role that technology can play in the future. I want to get to the esports in a second, but I want to just get the yeah. plug in for Acronis. We're here at their Global Cyber Summit. You flew down for it, giving some keynote speeches and talks around security. It's a security company, data yep. protection to cyber protection. It is a data problem, not a storage appliance problem. It's a data problem holistically. You get that, you've been in sure, the business for sure. a long time. What is the security kind of posture that you guys have? Obviously you want to protect the data, yeah. protect privacy, but you got a business. You have people that work with you, supply chain, you yeah. complex, but yet dynamic, always on right, environment. Yeah. That's a great question. So it's, it's evolving as you indicated. You know, Major League Baseball, first and foremost, does an outstanding job. So the last 
probably last four plus years, ML Major League Baseball has had a cyber security program that all the clubs partake in. So all 30 clubs are active participants in the program. Uh, they build, basically help sort of build out a suite of tools as well as sort of the ability to kind of monitor, um, help participate in the monitoring of sort of a lot of our cyber you know, security assets and logs. And, uh, and that's really elevated significantly sort of our posture in terms of security. We supplement that quite a bit, and a good example of that is like a Cronus. You know, Cronus for us represents for, um, the ability for us to be able to kind of respond to certain you know, potential threats like ransomware and other things, as well as frankly, you know, what's wonderful about a tool like this is that it allows us to sort of also solve other problems, making our scouts, you know, more efficient, and we've got these 125 scouts scattered around the globe. And you know these guys are the lifeblood of our you know of the success of our business. And so when they have a problem, if they're in Venezuela or the Dominican or someplace else in you know in Southeast Asia, like you know getting them up and running as quickly as we can, be able to consume their video assets and other things as they're scouting prospects. I mean, we use Cronus for those solutions. And so um, so it's great to kind of have a partner who can sort of both kind of double down as yeah. a cyber partner as well as sort of someone helps us And people bring their phones business. into the stadium too, so those are endpoints now connecting to your network. Definitely, and as you pointed out before, we've got great partnerships. You know, we have got a great concession relationship with Aramark. And, um, and they operate in the future, they'll be operating off our infrastructure. So we're in the point of rolling out all new point of sale terminals this off season. Yeah. And so um, we're excited about that because we think for the first time it really allows us to build a very comprehensive, um, very secure environment, you know, for both ourselves and for all the touch points to fans. You know, you have a very stellar career. I noticed you were at Scudder Investments back in the 80s, very cutting edge firm, FTD, that set the whole standard of connecting retailers, again, Huge scale play, you can see the data kind of coming out, yep. the way you've been a CIO, CTO, uh, the EVP CIO at the Weather Channel, and the weather.com, again, first mover, kind of pioneer, um, and then now the Red Sox pioneer. So I got to ask you the modernization question. Red Sox certainly have been very cutting edge, certainly <laughs> under the last two owners, um, and the previous Henry's a good one, doing more and more. Has the business model of baseball evolved? Because you guys are a franchise. Right, sure. You, you operate under the franchise or the ML Major League Baseball, and you have jurisdictions. So has digital blurred the lines between what advanced media unit can do? You've got communities developing outside. I watch the games uh, in California. I'm not in there, but I, I'm present sure, digitally. Sure, sure. So how has the business model flexed with the innovation yeah. of baseball? That's a great question. So, I mean, first off, the relationship between like clubs like ours and MLB, you know, continue to evolve. You know, we have a new commissioner, relatively new commissioner, and uh, and I think, you know, kind of the whole like one baseball model that he's been um, promoting, I think it's been great. You know, I mean, the, the, the boundary sometimes between digital assets and, and how we innovate and things like that is, uh, continues to evolve. I mean, Major League Baseball and the technology groups and product groups that support Major League Baseball, you know, have been a fantastic partner of ours. I mean, if you look at some of the innovations with StatCast and some of the other types of things that fans are now becoming more familiar with, and when they see sort of how fast a runner goes or how far a home run goes and other sort of things, these kinds of capabilities, you know, are on the surface, but even like mobile applications to make, yeah. make it easy for fans to come into ballparks and things like that. Really, are, are we, what we see is really our platforms for the future touch points to all of our customers, you know? But you're right, it gets complicated. Yeah. Streaming videos, and you know, I mean, no people hadn't thought of Latin before, America, and, huge audience with the Red Sox, got great players down there. That's outside the jurisdiction, I think, of the franchise agreement, isn't it? Well, <laughs> it's complicated, you know? And, I mean, as this past summer, we, we played two games in England, right? So we enjoyed two games in London. Sadly, we lost the Yankees on both of those, but, but an amazing experience, yeah. and, and Major League Baseball, really hats off to those guys, what they did to kind of pull that together. You mentioned StatCast. I, every year when I meet with Andy Jassy at AWS, you know, he's a sports fan. Uh, we love to talk sports. Um, that's a huge, um, kind of shows the power of data and, and cloud computing. No uh, doubt. How do you guys interface with StatCast? Is that an Amazon thing? Do they come to you? Are they leveraging dimensions, camera angles? How does that all work? I mean, are you guys involved in that? Or oh yeah, that yeah. Separate? So, so StatCast is just one of many data feeds, as you can imagine. You know, one of the things that made you face does is um, all that type of data is readily available to every club. So every club has access to the data. The real you know, competitive differentiator, if you will, is how you use it internally. Like how your analysts can consume that data 
we have a baseball system we call Beacon. You know, we retired Carmine, if you're familiar with the old days of Carmine. So we retired Carmine a few years ago with, with Beacon. And, and Beacon for us represents sort of our opportunity to, to effectively sort of you know, collapse all this information into a decision-making environment yeah. that allows us to, we hopefully, to kind of make the best decisions. Well, I love that you're games. answering all these questions. I really appreciate it. The one I really want to get into is obviously the fan experience. We talk about that. Um, no talent on the field means no World Series, so you've got to always be constantly replenishing the talent pool, farm system, recruiting, scouting, all these things go on. They're instrumental, data's a key driver. What new innovations that the, the casual fan or IT person might be interested in around what's going on around scouting and understanding sure, the sure. asset of a human being, the human right. resource? Piece. Sure. Well, I mean, some of this gets you know highly, highly competitive, you know, confidential, confidential and things. But I think at a macro level, I mean, I think as you start to see both in the minor leagues and in some portions of the major leagues, wearable technologies. You know, I mean. I think beyond just sort of player performance information that you would see traditionally with, you might associate with like Billy Bean and things like that with Moneyball, yeah. which has evolved obviously considerably since those days. You know, I mean, understanding sort of player wellness, understanding sort of how to get the most out of a player and understanding sort of be able to kind of predict potential injuries and yeah. accelerate recoveries and, you know, being able to use all this technology where appropriate to really kind of help sort of maximize the value of player performance. I mean, David Ortiz, you know, I, mean, I don't know where we would have been in 2018 without, you know, David, yeah. you know, type of thing. And, um, but like, Longevity you know, of a player to yeah, absolutely. when they're in the zone. I mean, you wear a ring now to tell you if you're sleeping well. Our, will managers have a visual in the zone? Don't pull him out. He can go an extra inning. I well, mean, I mean, they have a lot of data. I mean, we don't. We currently don't provide all that data to the clubhouse. I mean, you know, yeah. and so if you're in the, I mean, if you're in the dugout, that information is in all these readily available type of thing. But, um, but, but, p players know all this information, and they, you know, I mean, we continue to evolve it. And at the end of the day, though, it's a, it's finding the balancing act between data and 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 the the. The you know, aptitudes of our coaching staff and our managers to really make make the best decisions. Brian, final you know. question for you: What's yeah. the coolest thing you're working on right now? Um, and besides the fan having a great experience, because that's you already kind of touched on that. What's the coolest thing that you're excited about that you're working on from a tech perspective that you think is going to be game changing or interesting? I think our cloud strategy coming up in the future. It's um, still a little bit early stage, but. Our hope would be to kind of you know have clarity about that in the next couple months. I think is going to be a game changer for us. I think having uh, you know we, we enjoy a great relationship you know with Dell EMC, and yet we also do work in the cloud. And so being able to kind of leverage the best of both of those to be able to kind of create sort of a compelling experience for both fans, for both player baseball operations as well as sort of running an efficient business. I think is really kind of what we're all about. I mean, you hospital. guys are the poster child for hybrid cloud because you got core, data center, IOT, and no doubt. So it's over. So it's exciting times, and it's uh, and we we're we're very fortunate that with our okay. relationship with organizations like Dell and EMC, we you know we have leading edge technologies, yeah. and so it's uh, and so we're excited about where that can go and kind of what that can mean and. You know, so it'll be a it'll be a okay, big step so in the right direction. Okay, so two personal questions for me as a yeah. fan. One, is there a really a money counting room like in the movie The Town? <laughs> they count money on a big stack of dollar bills. Well, I'm, I'm sure there is. I, I personally haven't visited it. I, I know it's not in the room that they would sort of, you know, tell you it is on the movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They won't say location. And, and finally, can the Cube get press passes to cover the cover the games next to, next to Nesson? Talk yeah. tech. We'll see what we can they do. Can talk baseball. We'll talk about bandwidth. Right now, it's uh, the level five connectivity. We're looking good on the pipes. Yeah, we'll give you, you a tech. That? We'll give you a tech tour, right, and cool. you guys can sort of help uh, our, us articulate all that to the Thank fans. Thank you so much, Brian Shield, Vice President of technology the Boston Red Sox here talking about security and also the complications and challenges but the mega opportunities around what digital and fan experiences are with a physical product like baseball encapsulates kind of the digital revolution that's happening. It's a Cube covering it here in Miami. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back after this short break.